Okay, we're going to start, so this is the 23rd, and we're going to start molecular naming, naming molecular compounds, naming things that are held together covalently. We will go through some together. You will do some practice on your own. I will post a FIP quiz. It will be up by tomorrow morning. Okay, it's my commitment to you. The FIP quiz will be up by tomorrow morning. You are responsible for taking it before you come in here on Monday. And I would recommend not waiting until Monday to do it. Um, so you'll have the molecular FIP due when you walk in on Monday. You cannot come in here and take it. you got to take it before you get here. On Monday, I'm going to give you a big set of mixed review or mixed naming practice. So it's going to be all the kinds of things we've done, all thrown into a basket, jumbled up, slapped on some paper. You're going to practice them. Then there will be a mixed naming and formula writing FIP quiz. Once you finish that practice, you decide when you're ready to take that FIP quiz, but you can take it as soon as Monday. Once you have taken that FIP quiz, you are eligible to start taking your naming quizzes. Okay? And... Once you start taking your naming quizzes, then the, the clock starts ticking. So we'll talk more about that on Monday. I don't think anybody will take their first naming quiz before Tuesday, would be my guess. Um, so, you know, you'll have Monday to practice, take your FIP, see where you're at, see how good you are, and keep moving. Okay, so let's do molecular naming. Okay, so we've been talking up till now about ionic compounds. Now we're going to start to talk about compounds that are held together with shared electrons. These are covalently bound. They form molecules. And there are actually two different systems of naming for them. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the one that we're going to learn, we're going to focus on, is the prefix system. Okay. This is the system that, in my experience in college chemistry classes, and I need to talk to some current professors, Everybody who I was encountering was still using the prefix system. The stock system is the newer way to do it. I had both instructors, and this was a long time ago, 20 years ago. Um, I had instructor, like I had an instructor who got his PhD in the 60s. Now clearly he would be using an older system. We'd expect that. But I also had a couple instructors whose PhDs were, you know, a few years old. They were, you know, fresh, brand new, and they were still using the prefix system. So I focus on the prefix system with you guys. I will teach you the stock system, the other methodology. It involves doing oxidation numbers, which we're not going to do just yet. I want you to be aware of it. I want you to have some sense of how to use it. If you get to college chemistry or further study and they're using the stock system, I don't want it to be something you never heard of. I want you to have familiarity with it and you'll be able to come up to speed. But I, my hunch is that most people are still using the prefix system, so I want you to be real familiar with that. And that's the one that's used sort of in common, you know, if, if you're not going on in chemistry, that's the one that's used when people discuss chemicals. People discuss chemicals, right? They do in my world. Okay. So, um, the example we've got for the prefix system, carbon tetrachloride. It's one carbon, four chlorine, and the name tells you exactly what's there. So... Let's look at the prefixes. Okay, when you use the prefix system to name a molecular compound, the less electronegative thing is first. If they were ionic, this is the thing that would be a positive ion. This is the thing that's essentially not, <clears throat> not pulling in as much of the electron cloud. This is the thing that's giving up its electrons pretty easily. You only need a prefix on the first item if there's more than one of that atom. So notice in CCl4, we don't call that monocarbon tetrachloride. The fact that we're saying carbon tells us there's at least one carbon atom present. So you never put a prefix, you never put the prefix mono on the first thing. Okay. The second element is whatever is more electronegative. If these were forming ions, it would be the thing that would be the negative ion. And that gets a prefix no matter how many there are. And it gets the IDE ending, just like anions. So that can be a little bit confusing. So this is, like we said, carbon tetra, which is four, chloride. And that's all one word. I should make that clear. 
tetra chloride. Okay, the prefixes, and you just have to memorize these. Most of them are pretty easy. You know, mono, di, tri, you could do in your sleep. Um, tetra, if you've ever played Tetris, there are four ways to set down any block. Um, penta and hexa are easy. Pentagons, hexagons. Hepta is a weird one, but you'll remember it. Um, octa, octagons. Nona, N, Nona. And deca for 10, you've got all those associations of decades and things like that. So you just have to know those. You don't have to know how to use them. Here's, here's another example. This is phosphorus penta bromide. So we're going to start out, we'll do some practice with these. We're going to start out naming compounds when, no, actually we'll start out writing formulas when I give you a name. Okay, so let's say I tell you that I have di, I cannot spell, nitrogen trioxide. Okay, so that's N2O3. Let's look at phosphorus is good for these. Tetraiodide. Phosphorus tetraiodide. Phosphorus tetraiodide. Okay, we'll shrink this. Now let's do selenium trifluoride. The hardest part of this will be finding selenium. Okay, compare notes. SEF3? Yep. Okay, these are pretty easy, yes? Ridiculously easy. Let's go the other direction, and they're really no harder there. So let's do this. This chemical is a major component of Earth's crust. It's found in lots of rocks. SiO2, name it. Yep. Silicon dioxide. Okay. What about SF6? You built this. You drew it. What's it called? Sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, we'll go for one last AS two O four. What you got? Di arsenic tetraoxide. And we typically when we have a compound that starts I'll have to look if they drop the A or not. Um, sometimes that extra A gets dropped, so let me just reference that and we'll confirm. Okay, these are really easy, aren't they? Here's why I said you're going to hate dichromate. When you're looking at a bunch of stuff put together, where are you going to get tripped up? You're going to get tripped up when knowing, you know, ooh, is this ionic or is this molecular? Do I use prefixes or do I crisscross? Ah! When you see a name, and that name is something like, you know, blah, 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 dichromate, what's it too easy to do? Assume that this is molecular. So the dichromate ion is a trap. The um, Macaulay Atomics, dimercury is a trap. Um, dihydrogen phosphate is a trap and bicarbonate is a trap. So there, there are a couple, oh and yeah, dichromate, dimercury. So there are four, I only see the four, um, dihydrogen, phosphate, but those four are real nice traps. Um, if you believe that I will not lay those traps out for you on your naming quizzes, you don't know me very well. Of course I will, but I warned you. 
Um, so you want to watch out for those. You just need to kind of recognize some of those polyatomic ions. Other than that, yeah, these are really easy. There is practice on page 213. There are a couple practice problems. I'd do those for yourself. And then you'll have, I, I'm going to try to get that molecular naming FIP up. I'll try to get it up today by the end of the day. I don't know that that will happen. So you can take that as soon as you want to <coughs> do the practice. And then Monday when you come in, you'll have the mixed, mixed practice slash review. Okay, questions, comments, concerns? Excellent.